you know, I was thinking last night about how can I do a video that's helpful in the middle of this virus and to help you guys manage your anxiety about it, to help you manage your feelings, to help get some perspective on it. And, you know, I feel very grateful for the model of therapy that I do because it's always handy at putting things into perspective. And I was thinking, I was thinking about uh, my own upbringing and my own childhood trauma and thinking about had this virus hit, let's say like if I was eight years old, all those years ago, is how would my parents have handled it? And the answer is, you know, well, they wouldn't have handled it. <laughs> um, my parents were incredibly limited people who were highly immature. They ran everything in their life up until the last minute. They really didn't believe, they didn't really take things very seriously. But in, in the long and short of it is, is they would have started blaming each other for uh, not being prepared and they just would have gotten into some kind of nasty power struggle and had a fight about it. Like nothing ever went sort of like um, smoothly in the, in, the, in the family that I grew up in. Um, and eventually they also would have started blaming the kids and being reactive with the kids. So as a child, we just, I just would have witnessed these two people uh, just really go so hard at it on each other in the middle of something that was really anxiety producing and something really scary. Um, and when I think about children who grew up in a system like that, and this, this might resonate with you and it might not, is children just watch that and they just watch the, the heartbreak about it, they just watch the, the nastiness about it. Children are like little sponges and they just kind of take it in. And they also um, know that something is up in the present. Meaning, had this virus hit all those years ago, I would have heard about it at school. I would have known that, that something was going on. I wasn't in school. And I think, think about all that awareness for a child of what is going to happen in the future and, you know, just witnessing the parents just be so off about it. And why, why even think about that at all right now is for perspective. And if you grew up in a system like that, it doesn't have to be really like, you don't have to resonate with, with what I grew up with. But if you grew up in some kind of dysfunction and chaos or abuse and trauma, um, if you look at it in that way, you can gain perspective on what to do in the present. In other words, is think about like what a child growing up and what I described is if they did have a healthy person in their life, what would that person have said to them in those moments? and meaning that a child needs to know that there's some hope. A child needs to know that things are generally gonna be okay and there's things in place about what to do if we get sick or we have a problem or we're having like food shortages or if we're really, really scared and anxious is why I bring up my parents is my parents failed miserably at meeting any kind of emotional need of a child. And if you have unprocessed trauma, if you're stuck with that, chances are some of your triggers around the virus right now might be related to how you were raised. And you may have been raised in a similar way like I did, or you may have been raised in not that, just a different version of some kind of dysfunction. So I want to have you guys reflect on and think about what did you need growing up that you didn't get? That's one piece. The other piece is what do you need now emotionally? If your inner child was front and present in front of you and holding all the emotions about the appropriate fears of money stuff and food stuff and health stuff and all the, all the economic kind of mess that might come of this is what does a kid need from in a healthy adult about it? And also, can you be that healthy adult for that part of you that is scared or anxious? Or even if, there's a, if, there's, if your emotional reaction to this whole thing is kind of, uh, kind of numb or shut down or underwhelmed. So what you guys can do is get out a piece of paper and with your, right, with your dominant hand, uh, this is inner child work, you can ask yourself, what do you need right now from me, that's the adult you, what do you need 
about the fear around the virus. Then you put the pan in your non-dominant hand and you see what your kid might say if your kid wants to talk at all. And then your kid might say, I need a hug. I need to know what's going to happen. I need to know if we have enough of this, I have enough of that. I need to know if my loved ones are okay. And those are all almost all questions that if you ask a real kid right now, um, if they were upset about the virus or were afraid or in some way, those are some of the things that they might sort of say when it comes to an emotional based fear. So whatever the child responds with, try to validate what they need. Try to sort of say, I know things are really, really scary right now and I can be, you're with me now and we're in the present and we're okay. Um, and why to say something like that is that remember like what I, what I spoke about my own childhood is there was never uh, a sense from an adult that things were actually going to be okay. So it's really important that we're able to give that to ourselves and that your present situation, no matter how dire it is, is that we are never, never as powerless as we were when we were growing up in either emotional abuse or sexual abuse or physical abuse and all that kind of like family dysfunction stuff on a deeper level. So that the adult part of you can handle these emotions and to give your inner child a sense that things are going to be okay and that you're with them and that it's never as bad as it was back then. And your kid might actually say why. Things are really, really bad right now and which is probably a really good point for the kid to say. Then you say that, you know, when we were a kid, we never had um, good information. When we were a kid, we never had uh, a car. We never had power. We never had choice. We just kind of had to go along. And all we had when we were a kid is worry and worrying about what the adults were going to do or worrying how things were going to go or just kind of be in a little bit of a daze and a little bit of a, a checked out place and we don't have to do that right now. So our adulthoods are always a million times better than what it was like as a kid because we have essentially personal resources. If you survived your childhood, you will be fine through this, even if this is extremely hard because that you can be an emotional resource to yourself. So I hope that that makes sense. So. You, the adult will ask the kid, what do you need through this? The kid might say, I, I don't know what I need, you know what I mean? Or just to talk about if it's scary and to talk about how it's very, very different than growing up and what to do about it in the present. So, and to close with that is, makes me think about where, you know, Mr. Rogers might say, look for the helpers or be the, be the parent that you needed when you were growing up all those years ago. And what you can do, almost like to come up with an emotional plan, is to not be glued to social media or the news as a way to, because we're just going to be constantly reactive to it. It's going to be good. Check the news. Be current. But don't just get caught up in a scroll feed and, and just being locked into what the next sort of thing is. Because sometimes, not sometimes, that'll really make your emotional state a lot worse. Um, it might be good to like listen to music. It might be very good to connect with people that you enjoy, whether a phone call or something like that. It might be even great to check up on other people just to get out of your own head, almost like an act of service. Those are some things that you can express to your inner child of things that you can do. And I also want to acknowledge that maybe this video could be frustrating because you might be in a really, really hard place. You might be in a really hard economical place, financial place, um, even a health-wise place. You might be freaking out, which is really appropriate. But if you can ground and check in with yourself and check in with this inner child part of you, it'll probably be a lot more manageable than just free-floating reactivity or anxiety. So I hope that that was helpful. So just to recap, um, try to be the adult that you needed growing up. Um, the present, as dire as it gets, is always a lot better 
than being uh, a child who doesn't know what's going on, who doesn't have any power, and you really can't rely on the adults. And just some general wellness things that people are, you know, and this stuff is like general knowledge at this point about just basically coming off social media, taking a break from it, coming up with some kind of like plan in a way of what can you do to just not be sort of like marinating in these emotions and things will definitely get better. There'll be more videos to come. I hope that this video was helpful. That's my main message to you guys is to be the parent that you needed growing up when you didn't really get any care about things being scary, things being tough, things being kind of amb like having ambiguity, things being left up the air, which is having things left up in the air, which is what I find for trauma survivors is like the number one triggering thing. Not knowing how this thing is going to go down or what's going to happen is trigger city. So to be able to have a little bit of hope and to sort of like surrender to not knowing and that for having that be okay in some way is going to help and that you being connected with yourself through this thing and connected with other people in some way is probably gonna help. So I hope that the video was helpful. There'll be more videos to come. If you're in a really bad place, my heart goes out to you. And on the bright side is, you know, I think that with how people are behaving around this thing and being smart about social distancing, I think that that's a really good sign. I'm actually really um, impressed and inspired that people are able to sort of follow those rules as best as they can. I know that not everybody is, but I just think it's, it's, it's just impressive to me, especially at a time where we don't really have a lot of faith in how humans are behaving. <laughs> um, so I wish you well. I hope the video was helpful and take care of yourselves. Take care. Bye-bye.